Hi, I'm Lara Sky, and today we're going to be talking a bit more about chastity. If you haven't seen my other videos, I really recommend you go and watch The Beginner's Chastity, my Locktober video where I talk more about the non-fantasy side and kind of like how it's your own game, your own progress that's important rather than feeling like you have to be locked for life. And I also have my thoughts on long-term chastity. They will all be linked in the comments. I might go over some of the stuff that I've already done before but I keep getting asked questions so I thought I would just make another video and we could have a chit chat so you might know I love chastity I will keep saying it I'll get very excited I've also been drinking not alcohol <laughs> this is just lemonade with orange juice in it but I'm very hyper and um, I apologize <laughs> if I speak fast I'm excited by chastity and I have sugar. I'm also using a spanking bench as a table, so <laughs> it's all go here. It's all it's all wild. Anyway, so I've kind of noticed, obviously, over the past couple of years, people getting more and more into chastity. Every October, which is October, locked October, if you didn't know that, um, everyone is getting more and more into it. It's becoming more mainstream, more spoken about. You know, like kind of normal stores are starting to sell cages and I always think that see when something starts to get joked about that's when it's about to become normalized when people start joking about it and they've not done it yet it's like it's nearly there we're working our way in don't worry before long all men will be caged my life goal and just to upset some of you cage subs have no rights oh my goodness I said it again <laughs> Imagine me, a fandom creator, on my own channel, saying <laughs> that as a fantasy, men have no rights. Oh my god, I said it again. I could just feel the insecure man turning this off. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm on too much of a wind up today. Um, but yeah, as um, some of you are going to get upset, feel free to leave a comment tell me that I'm a horrible person who denies men their basic rights of touching themselves. Go ahead. I will take it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, from like a fantasy point of view, obviously, like just, you know, it's fine. We're all good. I think you understand that it is a fantasy, that I am not literally locking you under the like, stairs and leaving you there with no food or water and just in a cage. Anyway, so, Lately, I've been getting asked a lot about caging, so kind of the normal questions are like, what kind of cage should I get? Um, we can talk about materials. So I personally do not like silicone. I think it's very fun if you're just gonna wear it with a partner and it's more for like the sensation of being caged or like that role play. Not very good for long-term wear. So then you have plastic. So different kinds of plastic as well. So you've got your metal cages, your plastic cages, and then, this doesn't fall over, we have our 3D printed cages. So They're all slightly different styles and what you would do, obviously, you would measure and then see which one fitted you best. I don't know why I need to keep saying this, but do not measure yourself when you're hard. Flaccid, please. Um, so, yeah, if you measure yourself when you're hard, your cage is going to be too big and it will be uncomfortable. Just trust me, okay? Just take your proper measurements, use a soft tape measure, and if you don't have one, use a piece of string so that you can then, like, put it around and then measure it against a ruler. Um, yeah, you might be tempted by something like this. You'll probably get something like this in like a normal kind of like love honey or sex shop um, I think Anne Summers does smaller cages actually but yeah a lot of places will have these massive ones which basically nobody fits in okay so I mean in terms of you know size this is a regular so this is obviously like a large cage and I would say that most people are gonna be, let's see, so many cages. So yeah, this is a regular. 
yeah I would say like this size for most people this one possibly on your size down so another thing to think about a lot of people ask me this um will you shrink long term yes wearing it for a day no obviously it is part of the fantasy so you've got to decide like oh am I scared that this is going to happen or am I quite excited by it um yeah so over the long term what will happen your erect size will normally stay the same I mean like slight maybe slightly different but because of the way that your penis works obviously like the blood flows there and it expands so your internal structure isn't going to change unless you have like a medical procedure to chop off I mean if you want to do that by all means right that's not what we're here to talk about so when you're thinking about like your flaccid side because the um the blood flow isn't going there as much you will find that like your penis will become smaller like over time so over the course maybe of a few weeks or a few months you would maybe be able to go it's probably better to show you on this example but you would be able to go from say this cage to the size down which you know like there is a considerable difference so imagine you had bought this one it was a little bit big you only came to about here and then you're thinking okay I want to wear this more so you get this one which is tighter and this is what will normally happen you get a cage that has a little bit of space so you have measured yourself but you go maybe on the bigger side because you're not sure and I would recommend if you're between sizes for your first cage to go up because what you don't want is to be struggling with like the mental side of like changing your routine and stuff and then also having like pressure so once you've sized down from this to this it'll feel quite tight it shouldn't be uncomfortable if you ever have pain remember to take it off we do not need your penis falling off we do not need to cut off unless it is intentional um but yeah so you'll probably go something like this and this will be quite comfortable it will be tight snug is maybe a better word so it won't be uncomfortable it won't be pushing you in so then if you went from this to this it's going to be another few months down the line this one you will feel it pushing you into yourself so I mean obviously some people might start out in this you get flat cages you get inverted cages as well which I have um, so this one is from Locked and Lost as well. It's actually got like a little attachment you can put different uh, ends on it but I, I can't show you the ends on here surprisingly enough. So this is an inverter. You can also use it as a flat cage so actually I'm not going to unscrew that. So basically if you wanted to use it as a flat cage you would take this middle part off and screw that directly onto here. Some of them you get they're just flat they've not got this kind of dome inside but this is for like somebody who's been wearing chastity for a very long time who's very used to it and um, you can go to the toilet in this one because it's inverted so some cages you can some you can um flat cages you normally can use a bathroom with obviously something like this has a lot of space um for you to use the toilet um yeah these all have like fairly large holes but we could talk about hygiene actually this is all gonna ramble together we love it I told you I was <laughs> hyper on sugar um but yeah we love brain dumps what who doesn't um so basically yeah when you're going to the toilet you'll be able to pee as normal some people find it more comfortable to sit down what you do have to make sure is that you're cleaning your cage so you don't necessarily have to take your cage off every day right some cages the way they're designed so this is obviously a little bit more enclosed than this one this one this whole part's metal um you are going to have to think about how you clean it i personally suggest that you take it off like maybe every couple days and clean some people prefer just to be caged for a long term and not to remove the cage so you can use like q-tips there are many many suggestions reddit's always a great place there is lots of like chastity topics there uh, but yeah just make sure that you're keeping yourself clean also to keep yourself dry is another very important factor when you are being caged especially in the summer um yeah and keeping your cages clean i think i kind of touched on it earlier so if you i don't like silicone <laughs> Um, I find it kind of pointless, fun enough for short term because it's very easy to get dirty and um, not very good for long term where when you're looking at something that's 3D printed or like kind of a poured plastic um, these are great for like people who are getting used to them they're 
you know, they're lightweight. This one is a hex lock. This one's an external lock. Other ones, you know, I've got like different kind of locks. Um, so I mean, the lock thing isn't super important. Up to you. I had a lot of people when I showed this one. They were like, I could undo that. Yeah, yeah, you could. That That's kind of the point. The point is that it's a very flat cage. Anyway, sorry, getting off topic. So for cleaning, metal is always going to be easier to clean. Um, you'll still have to inspect it for rust. You'll have to make sure that you are keeping it dry. But on the whole, it's a lot easier to like get bacteria off of metal. When you have something that's plastic, it's easier to get like cuts and scratches or you know, for it to get stained or for bacteria to kind of get into it a little bit. So you just obviously have to be quite careful. I would recommend if you are wearing a plastic cage that you probably, like long term, I would recommend you bought a new one every few months. I mean, obviously that could get expensive, but if you are noticing like anything happening with it, I mean, this might be a good example. It's just covered in fingerprints, but yeah, something like that. So obviously you can see the this might be a little bit difficult to keep properly clean, just obviously soap and water uh, taken off, putting it back on. When you are doing longer term chastity, um, I kind of prefer you to think about your long term goals. So I don't necessarily think that chastity has to be about being caged all the time. I know controversial. I do like the kind of mental chastity side where it's about reprogramming your brain, changing your connection to your body. So you're going to start thinking about like, long-term goals instead of instant gratification. People tend to find it really useful because you're changing habits, almost like stopping smoking, you know? So instead of reaching for your cigarette, or your penis in this case, um, you're sort of reprogramming yourself because it it is almost like an addiction. It's I don't want to sound like one of these crazy, like, no fat things, but I don't want to call it addiction, but it's definitely a habit that gives you enjoyment, right? So when you're bored, you've got nothing else to do, that's what you go to do. So when you change from maybe like touching yourself, even if you say once a day, you're changing that routine. So you've got to find something else to fill that space. So it depends why you're going into it. Um, touching on that, if you do have an addiction to masturbating, I would recommend that you do not do chastity full time and throw away your key. Okay. You want to go into it slowly, you want to reflect on why you're doing everything. I always like, I say, like, get a little diary or write on your phone or whatever. Spend some time being like, why do I do this? Why is it making me feel bad? Why do I want to make changes? I'd say for any kink, but especially chastity long term. So the problem is that if you are somebody who is like touching themselves, say like 20 times a day and you go cold turkey, it's going to put a lot of mental pressure on you and you're going to really struggle. So... And the other problem is, right, so you might last a week or two weeks and you're really struggling and you're thinking, oh my God, like I can barely do this. And then you pull the cage off, right, you can touch yourself and it's going to be the worst thing in the world and you're going to feel so bad and so shit and you're going to go into depression. And I might sound like, no, this is not going to happen to me. It happens, I swear, like 99% of people, if they have this mindset, like you can see it happening as a dom. So I always try and warn people and I just say like, your long-term journey is the most important thing. So if you want to touch yourself left, like you're doing a good job by putting the cage on. If you just want to wear it for fun, also great. But like if you are doing it as a way to like stop your addiction cold turkey, it's not going to work because what you have to do is like work more on yourself and you have to work out like what is causing me to do this or you know, like what am I trying to gain from this? And you have to kind of sit down and be like, okay, so if I touch myself, what am I going to do after, right? And I'll tell you what you're going to do, right? You're going to have the cage on and you're going to be thinking about taking it off and eventually you're going to break. And what you're going to do, you're going to touch yourself and you're going to be like, oh, that was it. And you're going to put your cage back on. And you're going to be like, okay, touch myself. And then you're going to carry on with your chastity, right? That's what you're going to do. You're not going to get hung up on it. You're just going to, you know, like put the cage back on. So literally, if you have a key holder, like for example, a lot of people will ghost me, will delete their accounts and come back a few weeks later, a few months later, but I was too embarrassed, like it's fine. You know, not everything has to be easy, not everything has to be at once. Um, but yeah, like long-term chastity is something that I really love, but I'm very open with people who want to like self-key hold and just have motivation. So one of the things that I do on my pages is we do like chastity check-in. So I do like training programs where you're caged constantly, but I almost think that like, your once a day check-in 
or even if it's once a week and you're just like I've got the cage on like I still think that's fun because you are putting your cage on for a purpose and people will be like well what if they didn't have it on the rest of the week I don't care like the fact is that you have put the cage on so you know it's like that that step I don't <laughs> I quite often say I don't care instead of I don't mind I know it's a bad habit and <laughs> it changes the tone massively but it doesn't affect me if you're open and communicating and you're moving forward in your chastity journey I am very happy if you have setbacks like I say just put your cage back on <laughs> um I mean even like take a day just you know like chill don't throw it away because then you'll feel more <laughs> say this about everything like about people purging throwing out all their kink stuff whatever like you're better just put it in a bag put it in a cupboard don't look at it for a day or two go back to it if, if you need to space Fully recommend, you know, like taking some personal time, going for a walk, just whatever you need to do, just chill. Okay, have we finished my <laughs> Lara Sky's mental health check-in? Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else there is to talk about chastity. Maybe about the keys. I did kind of talk about them. So you get different kinds of locks. This is a hex lock. This is pretty uncommon. So it's just a hex key that undoes this, but it makes it a very flat, kind of like seamless to the body. So this one is from House of Denial, the Hero Gauge. I have a review if you want to watch that. And then you get these locks, which are internal locks. And I don't actually have a cage with me. <laughs> um, I film in different locations, so I have bags of cages everywhere. <laughs> the other day it was really funny. So I had a workman coming in and I knew for a fact that I had a cage that I'd been filming with the night before and I couldn't find where I'd put it and I'm like running around I'm like no I can't be having the workman find my cages um, but yeah I found it was honestly it was just sitting on top of something like I'd probably walk past it 10 times crisis averted um, but yeah so you get these internal locks that are really great so an internal lock would obviously fit in here so one of the things that I do find though with an internal lock it can be a little bit harder to sort of change them. So if you le lose the key even, locks like this are quite easy. You know, like if you could, should I be telling you you could break it? Like this is a lot easier to cut off basically or to like jank open or, you know, you get like other sets of keys that are milly parts. So personal preference, um, an internal lock is obviously going to be harder to get off it is kind of the preferred locking method for a lot of cages now I think there's nothing wrong with an external lock it can rattle around but obviously I've got the keys attached just for reasons you also get um like the cellmate cage which is a bluetooth one the app's a little bit hard to use so you've got to get used to it um it's only in certain sizes as well so I think the large one actually is similar size to this they have a small one but the small one isn't very small so it's not very suitable if you're on the smaller side so I do do a keypod as well um i did a review on that but it's one of these things it's um like a numbered zip tie works really well and also just self-holding your key so i recommend as well in terms of like where can i put it what can i do with it um you can freeze it you can give it to a friend you can leave it at work so that's one of the things i do actually recommend is if you're caged and you're wearing your cage to work, I would say like, leave your key at home. And then if you're like, you know, wearing your cage at home, like put it on before you leave work kind of thing and then leave your key. So you've not got the temptation, like somewhere fairly easy to get hold of it, you know, in an emergency if you needed it. But yeah, not too much temptation. <laughs> it's turned into a very long rambly video. As always, don't love them. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I get asked about chastity frequently just up my sugar intake while I have a, a think. Um, I think a lot of it revolves around like the feeling of, you know, so there's the fantasy side, which I talk about a lot, men have no rights. Um, sorry, sorry. It was funny, I had a few people leave me bloody novels being like, you can't say on the internet that men have no rights. They might be oppressed and like oh imagine that imagine men being oppressed wow wow we um imagine a straight man <laughs> all the oppression he faces in his everyday lives um but yeah Ugh. 
Anyway, a lot of like people's kind of hesitation comes from, I think there's like a fear factor about talking to your partner and get a little bit of pushback. And what I say to that is I do have a video on this as well, communicating with your partner. Um, but yeah, just have an open conversation. And I think if it's something that you want to do on your own and your partner's not comfortable having it random, but you do it in your own time, you know, like, I would say it's perfectly acceptable to have hobbies that your partner isn't involved with, such as caging yourself. Um, but yeah, get them involved, let them understand why you like it, you know, like, you don't want to make them take the key if they're not into it, but you could be like, I think this could be fun, even for like half an hour, like, what if I took you to dinner and you had the key and then when I came back we had a fun time, like, so you're sort of like playing into different aspects or, you know, like, there's different ways that you can go down this, so there's that, there's like, it doesn't have to be for life, um, a very personal journey, the shrinking for some reason, some people really fetishise this, some people are so scared, Real, like realistically you'll downsize your cage if you want to so like I said you normally start off a little bit bigger and then you'll be able to go smaller to like inverted sizes oh on this topic do not use sounding cages I will fight you okay so as fun as they sound as fun as they are like they're not very safe so what you don't want to be doing is to be putting like so okay let's assume that when they come to you they're completely sterile so that's one use Assuming that there's no like little bits of metal, there's no scrapes, there's no bacteria on this, right? So you've got one use and then after that you are putting something that's contaminated inside your body, okay? So the difference between like a sounding rod and these tubes, I mean, I might be wrong, I think most of the sounding cages have it so you can still pee while you've got them on. Perhaps a rod that you could keep properly clean if it was stainless steel, potentially, I still wouldn't. Um, but yeah, what you don't want to be doing is wearing something long term where you're introducing like bacteria into your body, it's just not very safe and you'll get people saying, well I've been fine, right, cool, you've been fine. But it's not something that I really want to recommend and I would very much say, you know, it's a fantasy, but please don't, <laughs> please don't. You know, like if you want to experience like sounding and whatever, catheterization, I would recommend that you did it properly and safely. I am not into either of those things. Um, but I would recommend that you did them in a safe manner, fully investigated. And yeah, don't take unnecessary risks just for your kink. You know, like you don't want to end up hurting yourself and then over some, you know, like just, you're like, oh, I'm horny. And then you basically have to get your dick cut off, okay? Or you get a really bad infection or you get hurt. Like that's the last thing we want, okay? So <laughs> I love how I go from being like, men have no rights, but also don't damage yourself. Um, so yeah, there's the thing about like the shrinking, um, can you pee in a cage? Yeah, you can pee, you can pee, stand up, uh, sit down, are people going to notice? No, uh, people won't notice. Sometimes if you have like the external lock, people will see that, like a shape of it. Generally, I would say people shouldn't be looking at your crotch. Um, there is that if you're in public or like in a sort of like toilet situation or like a changing room at the gym. I mean, people shouldn't really be looking and if they do, just be like, ah, yeah, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna take it off you. <laughs> They're gonna take it off you, off you off. Um, we need to monetize again. But <laughs> yeah, basically, I don't know what else to say. I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I always miss something in these videos. Just have fun, honestly. Like, cages can be a little bit expensive, so I mean, I do have affiliate codes if you check my website. I'll try and remember to put them down below as well. Um, but yeah, it's just about make sure you measure properly. Remember that it's not for life. Like it can be fun just to play with, obviously talk to your partners. Um, don't have any shame in it. It's fun. And if you try it and you don't like it, that's cool as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is, it is a very long video. I am Lara Sky, <laughs> and uh, I will try and calm down from my sugar rush before the next video, but I doubt it. So have a lovely 